G'day everybody out there, my name's Joel, I play in a band called Airborne and uh, welcome to Gear Walkthrough. So we're going to start over here uh, in the backstage area. Uh, we're here at the uh, Globen Arena in Stockholm and uh, we're going to have a look at the guitars. So over here we got a black one, a white one, a black one and a white one. So we'll start with this one because this is the main one at the moment. My main number one, VB, this is uh, Melbourne Bitter as you can see there it's melbourne bitter explorer uh my main one vb is actually in the workshop at the moment because she's had a lot of breaks so we're redoing the neck and getting it fixed but as you can see this has been uh i guess carbon copy to be like vb so adam uh, my guitar tech at backstage at some festival somewhere in some country took all half the neck off and you know sanded it all back to make sure she her neck profile matched VB and we took a whole bunch of wood out of here that Adam took out and we took a whole bunch of wood out under here to get the weight right the same weight but he'll tell you about all the details of that later because I'm just the guitarist and I don't know what actually happened to it but right now it rocks so this is my main number one at the moment and VB when she comes back will be number one again, unless she's taken top spot, which could very well happen. So that's Melbourne Bitter. Now, over here we got, well, what do we call this one? Huh. Melbourne Bitter, but it's more of a, you know, this is a black guitar. So, um, what do we call this one, Adam? Yeah, I mean, it's the black one. So, but it's got a Melbourne Bitter thing on it. And look, I may as well go into detail about, we don't just put beer, um, you know, stubby stubby t uh, holder tops on, on our guitars to be cool or to work out which guitar it is. The reason why we do it is for a little finger for using your volume live. So without it, you know, there's a standard Gibson pot is, um, it gets, you know, there's a lot of beer and there's a lot of sweat and it sort of slips a lot. So. The grip, it, I don't know if you can see it, but on a beer top, it's made to be opened. So, so when you use your little finger, because you know, in the verses, I'm down around about, you know, five, six, maybe seven, depending on the sound, and then whack her, whack her up for the solo. There's no, there's no stepping on pedals or things. We just don't have time. And if we did, you know, we'd probably either break them or they'd come unplugged or we'd spill too much beer on them and we'd, we'd you know, we'd fuck them up. So, but the reason why I'm loving this one is uh, it's actually been chambered. We had it chambered in Australia. And uh, so it's, it's kind of like, I guess, like a chambered Les Paul. So it's had the weight taken out of it, but it has a really unique sound. And um, yeah, I fucking love this guitar. So we'll move right along to the next guy. And uh, what do we got? All right, so this, now both these two also are in 440. They stay in 440. And this guy, Carlton Draft. This one is, um, well, it's a new one. It's called 120, but Carlton Draft is what we know it by. The reason why it's 120 is because it's the 120th anniversary Explorer. And uh, as you can see, it's very, very fucking alpine white. The, reason, the only difference is because we've had this one longer. So you can see the two shades completely different because this has been out, you know, this one's been out in the road longer. And this one's, this one's in, what do we call it? It's like 420, no, 440, 420. So basically the whole guitar is D. It's not drop D. It's, uh, yeah, if you know what I mean. So it's like D, G, fucking C, whatever it is. Anyway, the whole, it's 440, two steps down. And it's for breaking out of hell. It's for diamond in the rough, back in the game. Um, anything that we have in that key is what she comes out for. She stays in that key. And you know, it's, it's, she's been a work in progress to get her up because when we originally got her, her fucking truss rod snapped in the middle of the neck. So we had to have that repaired. And um, she's, she's, has, she's had a rough start, but every day we're dialing in her tone. She's not comfortable yet, but she's getting there. And then uh, over here, she's, she's a backup. We picked up in Japan, first run and wild tour in Japan. And uh, if you have a look at the headstock, you'll see that she's not actually She's not actually a, a real one, but um, she sounds like a fucking demon. Picked her up in a shop in Japan, in a music shop, 
I can't remember, in Shibuya, I think it was, where I picked up my first leather jacket that was stolen from me by some cunt um, just before this tour. I had that jacket for eight years, so fuck him if you've got it. You're the coolest fucker in the fucking suburb that you live in because you took me fucking jacket that I had for four, you know, eight. I spent, I can't remember what I spent on it. It was the most money at the time. And I remember I was just in a rock and roll band. I saved up all my per diems. You know, I didn't have food every day, so I saved up my money. I finally bought my real leather jacket. Eight years later, if I find you, I'm going to fucking kill you. Anyway. This, this guy has saved my ass so many times. She always goes to Russia. Um, when we go to Russia, we have a, you know, we have to, sometimes we have to send different guitars because we've got to fly with guitars and, and we can't drive. Actually, wherever we have to fly, our, we, our, our certain guitars will come with us. But, you know, there's been times when, say, this guy's gone down and she's the backup. She's in uh, the same in D as well. So she'll come out for breaking out of hell or diamond or back in the game. And uh, yeah, that's the guitars. And then over here, you can see, if we take a look over here, Adam's got the Falcon out. We're gonna be getting her up to fighting strength soon. And uh, cause she hasn't been out in a while. And it's, as you can imagine, with all the stacks and all the sound on stage, it's hard to get a hollow body guitar to, you know, not to scream, scream at you. But so we're gonna get, maybe we'll have to fill it full of something. We'll see, we might have to put some stuff inside it but we'll, we'll see how that goes but uh yeah um yeah that's that's it for guitars wait there's an sg oh that's it oh that's in the uh that's in the band room we've got a there's also an sg that kicks around uh it's 60 once black and it's in the band room at the moment using it to warm up with and uh that's not all our guitars but uh yeah that's all we have on this tour for so, so far guitars Rightio, let's talk about amps. Now, uh, there's quite a few of them. So on this tour, on this side, we're running a JCM 2000 and a JCM 800. We don't, that's the beast mode thing, we don't have that in. It's, it's like a gate or something. It's not something we're using. Because what this essentially is, the Kerry King, it's, a, um, it's essentially just a hot rodded 800. And it fucking sounds awesome. So. We love a JCM 800, so we get a nice, <laughs> funny, beastie sound out of it. But um, yeah, and then of course, you know, there's the classic 2000. It's the, uh, you know, we've had that kicking around, that, that sound for a long time, especially on the road. Um, I have a JMP that we've just bought on eBay. It's a 1978 uh, master volume, which is what I have in Australia, which is what I recorded um, every album with, is what I use. And we've just got one from 1978. And she'll be meeting us in Helsinki, so I'm excited to fire that up. And she'll go in the number one spot down there. So this is on the stage right. So this is on the far side. So that my microphone's over here. So we will move along to this one. Now, we've got the wizard. The fucking wizard. As you'll see, when, when Rosie goes through his, he's, got, he's also got one of my wizards over there because we're finding that's a, a big rhythm sound for him. I'm running the wizard on, on, the, uh, on the lead mode. Uh, he'll be ha he's got it on the rhythm mode. F fucking, these amps are built like, um, I don't know, they're built to withstand a nuclear attack. And, uh, and they sound, their sound is very, uh, it's very unique to wizard. It, it's similar to, similar to Marshall in a way, I guess, but it's very, um, it's, it's very wizard. Marshall is very Marshall and Wizard is very Wizard. And I'm, I'm a guy who likes to blend. The reason why I like to blend, I guess, I do, I do it with everything in life. Well, really, rock and roll and alcohol. My favorite drink is Johnny Walker Black, which is a blended Scotch whiskey. It's the number one in the world for that. But I love Johnny Blue as well, but I'm not gonna have that with Coke. Yeah. <laughs> but um, so Johnny Walker Black, blended whiskey, Joel O'Keefe Tone, blended tone. So we've got the Wizard here. Now, now, you're probably looking at this going, why the fuck does he have a, something that says PV on it? And I'll tell you why, because in the 80s, PV decided to go up against Marshall when their JCM 800 sound. So this was their response to Marshall's JCM 800. There's about fuck all of these built. And um, it sounds like a, and it's called the Butcher. 
Peavy Butcher. I read about it in a magazine when I was a kid that my dad had because he had, it was in the garage. It was an old magazine, so I would have been about eight years old. And he bought a, a PVPA because he used to you know, play in pubs and, and play Australian traditional music. And, and that's how Ryan and I came up. We used to play with him as well. But he bought a, P, a PV, it was called a Triflex system. And uh, it had a big sub and then uh, it had two tops on it. And, um, and then, uh, it's, uh, then the rats chewed out the subs one day in the garage and then kind of fucked that up. But there was a magazine that came with it, and in the magazine it talked about PAs and PAs and PAs. The magazine was 1986 or something, and then or 88, and it had this PD butcher. And as a kid, I didn't know what the fuck that was. I just liked the term butcher, and I read about it 10 years later when I was playing guitar and thought, fuck, oh, because I had a Marshall stack, and I was like, where's this PV thing? You know, he couldn't find it. One day I found it. I found it in a guitar center in the US, in the Midwest of, of the United States, I found a PV butcher. So I immediately said, I bought it. It was only 400 bucks. <laughs> and uh, yep, you can see the settings. It's just all pretty much cranked up there, but it sounds, kind of sounds like a Marshall in a way. It sounds like an older Marshall. Um, and it's just good to have it back. This is her first time out of the US. So we flew her over. Anyway, PV butcher, move along. So then we've got the two 2000s here. Um, you know, that's just making up a lot of, doing the same thing twice. <laughs> um, yeah, love it. And, and when the JMP comes, the master volume, she'll be sitting here. 1978, it'll be, yeah, it's a 1978 master volume JMP, old school, uh, which is the sound I use on all our albums. So I'll have a real fucking blended tone going on by then. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much, it for the front of the wall, it gets inter interesting around the back, but I'll let Adam tell you about that because there's a lot of tech stuff going on around there because as you'll notice, there's three separate carts which we have to get up on stage in a matter of minutes and they've got to come off stage in a matter of minutes, especially on a support tour like this. And then if you see all our lights and shit and everything, and when you get behind the wall, you'll see that they've all got lights and they've all got stuff rigged on them that's custom made but I'll let him tell you all about that because there's a lot of theory and a lot of scientific work that went into it. But this is it, this is my wall. And uh, just like a blended Scotch whiskey, it's a blended tone. Cheers. Go. Right here. So you've probably heard me uh, for the last, I don't know how many minutes, 10, 20 minutes going on and on and on about guitars and amps and stuff. But the best part is turning them on. So uh, here is my blended Scotch whiskey tone. Here it is. And just like a blend of Scotch whiskey, it's very heavy on the Marshall side. And then we've got a little bit of Peavy thrown in there and a bit of Wizard thrown in there, just like a Johnny Walker Black. And um, if Johnny Walker's watching, please give me an endorsement for Johnny Walker Black. I drink enough of the stuff, I pretty much keep the company alive. Anyway, enough of that for me. Let's see what she sounds like. Blended Scotch whiskey time. <laughs> Cheers.